Welcome to Morbid History. This idea sprang from a conversation I had with my friend. Our conversations tend to get a little bit on the morbid side. These were just a fun thing for me to do every once in a while. I like learning about weird things in history, and this lets me share it with fellow weirdos like me. Of course, if anyone is as weird as me, they probably already know this stuff. Let's begin. H.H. H. Holmes was born Herman Webster Mudgett. He changed his name later after some sketchy stuff happened, which we'll get into later. He was born in New Hampshire on May 16, 1861, to Levi Horton Mudgett and Theodate Page Price. Mudgett graduated from high school at 16 and then went on to marry Kara Lovering in 1878 when he was 17. They went on to have a child, Robert, together. In 1884, he graduated from the University of Michigan's Department of Medicine and Surgery. Go Wolverines! Before he graduated that year, his wife Clara moved back to New Hampshire. There are some reports that he treated her violently. He also used cadavers to defraud life insurance companies while in college, because you gotta pay those bills somehow, right? He later moved to New York, where a rumor spread that he had been seen with a little boy who disappeared, but much it claimed the boy went back to his home in Massachusetts. Suspicious. He soon left town. Later, he went to Philadelphia, where he first had a job in the Norristown State Hospital, and then at a drugstore, where a little boy died after taking some medicine purchased from there. Suspicious. Again, he left town soon after. And it was then, before moving to Chicago, that he changed his name to Henry Howard Holmes. And thus, H.H. H. Holmes was born. In 1886, while still married to Clara, he married Murda Belknap in Minnesota. He filed for divorce from Clara after having been married to Murda for about three weeks. However, the divorce was never finalized. They had a daughter, Lucy, in 1889. And in 1894, in Denver, Colorado, he married Georgiana Yoke, while still married to both Clara and Murda. And now that his bigamy is out of the way, let's get to the murder. In 1886, he got a job in Chicago working for Elizabeth Holton at her drugstore, which he eventually purchased. He also purchased a vacant lot across from the drugstore where he started building. There were apartments on the second floor and retail spaces, including a new drugstore, on the first floor. He got into some trouble here because he refused to pay the architects or the steel company. In 1891, Holmes's mistress, Julia Smythe, and her daughter Pearl, who lived in his building, vanished. Holmes claimed Julia died during an abortion, but it wasn't clear what actually happened because, you know, Pearl vanished too. In 1892, he added a third floor to turn it into a hotel during the Chicago World's Fair, but the hotel part was never completed. This was due to some fraud and theft on his part. Is anyone surprised? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? This is the location now called the Murder Castle. It's unknown how many people were killed there, but there were hidden rooms and passages throughout the building, mostly where he kept stuff he hadn't paid for hidden. Also unsurprisingly, the third floor caught fire in 1893. The four insurance companies that he got policies from sued rather than pay. I mean, even if you didn't know about the murder, you'd have to be suspicious. Holmes left Chicago in 1894 amidst all the arson investigations, that same year, he was arrested for selling mortgaged goods in St. Louis, Missouri. While in jail there, he met Marion Hedgepath, who hooked him up with a lawyer, Jephtha Howe, to help him try to fake his death for insurance money. That didn't work, so he dropped it and moved on to wanting to fake someone else's death. His target was Benjamin Pitzel, who Holmes had known for some time. That's another way to say I'm not exactly sure how long. Pitzel agrees to fake his death so his wife can claim the $10,000 in insurance money. The twist here is that Holmes actually killed his friend instead of using a cadaver in his place, which was the original plan. Surprise! Pitzel's wife was somehow manipulated by Holmes to give him custody of three of her five children. Because why not give a guy who faked your husband's death your kids, right? Meanwhile, he told her her husband was hiding in London and Holmes moved them up to Canada. All of this while still with his third wife, who somehow had no idea that her husband was a psychopath. A Philadelphia detective named Frank Geyer, who was tracking Holmes, found the bodies of the two children, Alice and Nellie, in a cellar of a home Holmes had rented in Toronto. 
One of the girls had her club feet removed to make her body more difficult to identify. The detective then followed Holmes to Indianapolis, where he found the bones of the third child, Howard, in the chimney of the cottage Holmes had rented. Holmes was finally arrested after being tracked to Boston in 1894 and was sentenced to death for the murder of Benjamin Pitzel in 1895. After his conviction, Holmes confessed to 27 murders, even though some of those he claimed to have murdered were still alive. He was paid $7,500, or over $200,000 today, by the Hearst newspapers for his confession, which was found to be mostly fake. H.H. H. Holmes was hanged at the Philadelphia County Prison on May 7, 1896. And even though Holmes was said to have been calm, he asked for his coffin to be buried 10 feet deep and covered with cement. Because the guy who killed people for insurance money and sold bodies to medical schools was afraid someone would f with his body after he died. So, what happened to the castle? The castle was gutted by a fire in 1895 after two men were seen fleeing the building. Later, a gas can was found underneath the back steps. However, the building survived the fire and continued to be used until it was torn down in 1938. Now the lot is the location of a branch of the U.S. Postal Service. So that was the first, and hopefully not only, edition of Morbid History. If you want to find out more about H.H. H. Holmes, there's a link below to the book Devil in the White City and some other books and documentaries. Thanks for watching!